my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek at Gen Con Online. I'm here with Alex Shemansky from Ludenova Games, and you've brought us another in the long, long line of Rainier Knizia titles <laughs> this yes, year, yes. being uh, Babylonia, which was released, it had a European release uh, for Spiel 2019, but now we're looking at this because it has just uh, filtered across the pond now to have a US release. Mm -hmm. And it's a fantastic game. Um, yes. So this is actually kind of my introduction to Rainer Knizia. I have not played many of his past games. Uh, and I think this was a uh, fantastic entry point. Um, but it's a, I don't know, it, it, it's a fairly easy game to get off the shelf and just play. Um, we, my wife and I, since we're home together, uh, we're able to learn it fairly quickly and easily. I think that's pretty much his style aesthetic in this sentence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> very much so. <laughs> well, let's take a look specifically with Babylonia, uh, what people are trying to accomplish, and then maybe uh, we'll even try playing a round or two and just getting the feel for what a turn feels like. That sounds great. Um, so Babylonia at its at its heart is a tile placement game uh, for two to four players, kind of based in the Tigris and Euphrates kind of area uh, of of well, Babylonia. It actually does take place between the Tigris and the Euphrates on the board, which is kind of a, a neat little nod back um, yeah, to, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> to Tigris and Euphrates. Um, so the point of, the, of this game is that you and your clan are trying to kind of put your influence across the board uh, and influence these cities to kind of um, to make them them yours and, uh, and these ziggurats to make them yours. And also uh, in the end, just whoever has the most points is going to be the winner down and dirty kind of simple explanation of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it has some excellent wooden bits. That's one part I do love about this game uh, is the, the little pieces are, I think the ziggurats are nice little 3d pieces and all the, um, all the wooden pieces have great little kind of silk screened images, images on them and they all feel yeah. really high quality. It's, it's, I love it. <laughs> well, I'm and one of those people you're... that, Sorry. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, I was saying I was when say you're those... the... <laughs> Wait, do it again. You go. <laughs> uh, I'm one of those people that really, um, really likes really high quality components. Like that really gets me right in the heart for a game. But yeah. Yeah. I was saying that the I, I also really enjoy that with those wooden bits, the silk screening is so clear that from a distance, it's very... You can instantly see what each of the symbols are, which we're going to talk about in a moment. And you can also see that Nikki is uh, demonstrating that you've provided this nice little rack because you are drawing a certain amount of these chips from a face down pool. And so that's a way that you can kind of see uh, in a nice, easy way uh, which tiles you have available coming up for your turn. Yeah. Um... So in the board, or, uh, when you're starting the game, um, you're going to be setting up, depending on how many players play the game. And this is one thing I love about things like Small World, how they include kind of different boards for you to play with, depending on how many players you're playing. But like two players only uses the north and the center part. And like the, yeah. if you do three players, it's the south and the center part. And then it's four players, just uses the whole map. Oh, um, Once again, using really the rivers as a way to add something to the game, in this case, the appropriate size board. It's excellent. I, I think it changes the way that the game plays uh, so well for such a minute difference of adding up or subtracting a player. Yeah. Um, so when we start, we're going to be um, placing out all of the city tiles, which have the little blue uh, logo or uh, icons in the center. Um, and then uh, all of the farm tiles as well, which are the green tiles that either have a number on them or a little blue square at the bottom to indicate um, how it scores eventually, and we'll go over that eventually. Um, but you're going to be replacing those two uh, types of tiles randomly. Um, so your makeup of cities and farms are going to change from game to game, which is is kind of neat. I mean, I, I know in the game that we played, uh, my wife and I, um, we had a, a very large concentration of like <laughs> of farms that you didn't want to touch early game in like one spot. So like. <laughs> All of our gameplay was either in the north or the very south. We had nothing in the center for a little <laughs> bit. It was just, but it's nice to see that that um, th the game can play uh, can change uh, depending on how you set it up. I, we really like that a lot. Um, but uh, 
So then you're going to be placing the ziggurats on the uh, blue spaces indicated. Those will never change. Those will never move um, from game to game. And I think that's it's probably something with the design, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but uh, so each player is going to choose their color, uh, and that's the color of their clan. And you're going to get chips according to... Or, well, I, I, what I'm going to refer to as chips, I think uh, they might be referred to as tiles in the book. They seem more like chips to me. <laughs> They're a little... <laughs> little circular um, things. Um, and on your chips, you're going to have one of four symbols. And I know when I initially looked at this game and I saw like the big map and like all the locations and like the different symbols, I was initially, I was like, this is going to take a while to learn. And I was kind of afraid. And I nope. started reading through the book and I realized it's, it's not that complicated. <laughs> it's yep. like to jump in, it's actually fairly easy. Um, Cause you look, you have, you know, you have the, four different chips here, um, but really three of them are very similar and, and one of them is different. And that is the um, the star, the kind of person with a head, and the, um, the pot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those three are merchant, or are um, noble tiles. It's the merchant, the priest, and the civil servant. Uh, and then the other one that acts differently is the farmer. Um, so really you need to kind of know the difference between noble and farmer. Um, and that's going to get you a, lo a long way through this game. <laughs> um, so on your turn, uh, your, your choices are fairly simple. You're going to be either choosing to play two of any, one, uh, of any chip that you choose or three or more farmers out onto the board. Um, and where you place those is completely up to you. They don't need to be next to any other stuff that you already have, or they don't need to be uh, next to a, a, a city or a farm or anything like that. It, it, you can place them out pretty much anywhere. Um, and the whole point of this game, the, the, the kind of the goal of most of this is to, in most cases, surround these tiles. So um, if... You were playing a two-player game, and you were to. Uh, ah, this is difficult. Sorry, I haven't explained um, a game where my hands aren't the ones showing <laughs> what's what's going on yet. So this will be a new experience, uh, and this is a, a, a fairly difficult uh, game to explain like this. Um, hmm. Sorry, just one moment. Um, just let's, tell let's, me what to do, and I do it. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. Um, so if you could please place a, uh, find a, a farm tile, one of the green ones and place pretty much any of our, um, chips next to it face up and then choose a farmer tile or farmer chip. <laughs> all right. So this is going to be uh, one way to play your action. So as long as you have any one of your chips next to a farm, you can take a farmer and place it on top of that, um, what's it's called a crop field uh, tile. Then uh, you would claim that tile, put it uh, in front of you, and your farmer would take its place. <laughs> All right. Um, if you notice, I said that at the beginning, the crop uh, field tiles have kind of two functions to them. So there's ones with just a blue square at the bottom and ones with uh, numbers on them. And those numbers, I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. Um, so when you grab the, when you grab the tile with the number on it, it'll just immediately give you those points. And that's good for a one-time thing. Uh, and then if you grab one of the blue tile or one of the farm tiles with a blue symbol on it, you're going to be scoring points for every city that's in front of another person. Uh, and that would segue excellently into figuring out okay. how you would uh, obtain a city. So um, while you're playing with the cities, the tiles with the blue icons on them, you're going to be attempting to surround a city with uh, basically as many chips as you can. And that uh, one thing you might notice on the board, there are tiles that are land tiles, and then there's also tiles that are water tiles. They have a little... Um, kind of like a little wave symbol on them. Um, 
the water tiles are not necessary to uh, to place a chip on in order to surround the city. But once a city is surrounded, um, you're going to score points. Yeah, let's. Can we get um, around that city? Can I get uh, four of the tan and like the others of like a different color? Yeah, that's excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. So, uh, and then also could, uh, could you do me one over the favor and um, take two of the tan chips and then just put them on the, um, put them on two of the spaces kind of to the, what would be the south? I mean, like two, two additional ones. Sorry. <laughs> it's almost like we're making a little chain if you've. Uh, familiar with one of Kenitia's other titles through the desert, like sort of forming these little, uh, you know, sneaky lines would be a familiar concept to some people. From what I understand, it's it's a uh, it's kind of like a, a mixing of three of his previous games. <laughs> um, yes. Sadly, I, I haven't had much experience with them, but it, it, from what I like, from what it's been told to me, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, so when we're scoring, you notice that that city has two icons on it. Um, so any icon or so any chip around it that has any one of those two icons and then any chip that is also connected to any of the chips around the city. So like all of the tan that I can form a line to, uh, if they would also have the same icon, they would also score me points for that. Um, this happens for both players and or all players. So if there's, if there's more than two, uh, they would all score points at this time. Um, and the only difference uh, is if you notice the brown or the tan has majority right now, so they would get to take the city and put it in front of them. Once this happens, for anybody, um, everybody's going to score points according to how many cities they have in front of them at that time. So the more cities you have, the more uh, points you're going to score over time. Um I know that was one of my main strategies when I was playing, and I, <laughs> I, I might have gotten out front pretty quick. <laughs> 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 um, it's it's all exp exploration, you know, trying to trying trying different strategies and different different things. Um, so ziggurats, which are the uh, the stationary kind of brown um, little temples, are uh, are very similar in the way that they score with uh, with one key difference. So whenever you put a tile down next to a ziggurat, you're going to score points according to how many tiles you have next to all of, or according to how many ziggurats you have tiles next to. So if at some point you've also, yeah, there, excellent. <laughs> so if I were to place the bottom right tile or the bottom right um, currently, I would score two points because I have tiles next to two ziggurats. If I happen to put more tile or more chips next to ziggurats, I would score uh, three points for the next one. So it's just uh, amount of ziggurats that you have tiles around, not the amount of tiles you have around the ziggurats, if that makes any sense. Um, <laughs> so currently if uh, like, yes, placing that one there, I, it would be three, not four. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so you would never score more than five points for doing that because there are no more than five ziggurats on the board. Correct, but you could technically score ten points in a turn with that. Good, yes, because you could place one five points for one chip and five points for another chip. Yes. <laughs> um. So uh, one thing I haven't really gone over before, uh, so yet, is oh. Yeah, uh, when you're placing things, um, placing things in the water, or one of those waterways, you actually place them upside down, uh, so they will not count for whatever the um, whatever the icon is, just for a majority. Um, actually, so when you're counting majority, completely first, over Nikki, so it's on its blank side. Yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, so. You know, when you're counting uh, majority for cities, uh, and it also count, or it also helps for ziggurats as well. Um, you're you're not going to be so like for example for a city, if you have a, an upside down tile in the water next to a city, you might have four tiles there, 
uh, but only three of them show icons. If the other person has um, only two tiles there, you're still going to be winning that city. Uh, but you will not get points for that tile no matter what it is, um, like upside down. So yeah, so if you're trying to match symbols, and even if that symbol is... Um, even if that symbol is a priest, like it wants to be, I, I think, uh, because it's upside down, it's only going to count for your majority and for connecting your your pieces to other pieces. Um, and I mentioned before that uh, scoring ziggurats is very much like scoring cities. They also just take majority. Um, so once they're surrounded, you're going to um, you're going to decide, or you're going to figure out who has majority around it. That piece will not leave the board, but instead, that player that has majority at that time will get to pick one of these ziggurat cards at the top, um, therefore giving you a special power. And those are all uh, laid out in the rule book in a, in a wonderful page. But um, some of the more simple ones, uh, so number one will basically just give you 10 points right away. Number two, you can um, hold on to to take an extra turn in the future. Uh, number three is going to give you uh, seven uh, seven chips in your little um, rack instead of five. Uh, these are are probably much more useful to have early game than than late game because you know having a, having a special power for like a turn or two kind of kind of kind of stinks. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and then uh, other than that, I mean, you you just kind of keep playing until one person cannot place any more. Um, of their chips out on the board. So once one player runs out, the game is done. And we just want a, a clarification because we have a question from the chat from Tabletop Bellpop. Uh, he just wanted to, yeah. to clarify what the four different symbols on the chips mean. That what 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 benefit are those going to bring you as you're placing them wherever you want to per turn? Oh, um, so generally uh, the way that they're going to benefit you is just scoring points from uh, surrounding cities because cities will give you points according to how many uh, of those specific icon are either surrounding the city and or connected to your tiles surrounding the city. If that, if that answers it, I hope. <laughs> yep, and then the, and the farmers would then be the only tile that you're able to actually take that farm hex off the board and claim it for yourself, which is also another that way is to score correct. points. That is correct. There is, uh, I believe there's a power that allows you to change that so you can take it with anything but that would be one of the ziggurat but yes there you go. <laughs> <Perhaps>. <laughs> well I, I think it's that yeah it's it's one of those two <laughs> Nikki's on it. <laughs> that's, one the one. that's the oh, one that's the one <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> um and the game comes with nine ziggurat powers but you only play with seven at a time um generally they uh, suggest that you play with one through seven for your first game, and then you can shuffle them up for, for other ones. But. Now, have you found that, uh, is there, is there, Kinesia is known for having remarkably well-balanced games, and mm. I think there, this one, because the board is sized to change depending on the amount of players, would you agree that this game still remains extremely well-balanced, whether you're playing with two, with three, with four? I, I think very much so. Um, I know even in in our in our small game, I think we were five points apart. I think it was ninety or ninety four to ninety nine. I think at the end. I mean, it was I mean, it, it it was neck and neck the whole game, which was great. It, yeah. it made for a good experience. Now, I don't typically try to compare games by comparing them to other games, but since he has such a large catalog of his own stuff, um, you were saying like that this seems a somewhat a mix of three other games. I personally would say that I think this sort of has that chain feel of Through the Desert. It has sort of that, I hesitate to call it area control, but you, if people who are familiar with Samurai are probably going to be like, oh, yep, there's some familiar things there. Uh, I'm totally yeah. stealing this from Eric Martin, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, uh, he doesn't uh, isn't often known for using the bonus powers, but uh, he did an Amon Ray, so that's an element that I'm happy to see sort of uh, come back in. Um, now, I, I, I asked this also somewhat to the chat uh, that where this would, if people have played this before, sort of where it would rank in people's favorite Kenitsu titles or not. And I know that's not the best question to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> 
But uh, also, I think the, the other element in here that um, I would also tie to his designs is, uh, like in this region, obviously, Tigris and Euphrates is one of his most well-known titles, uh, one of his bestsellers oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad to see thematically that we're returning to the same region as well. Yeah. Um, one thing that also kind of uh, was, was very pleasantly surprising with this game is it's it's quick, <laughs> like very yes. quick for for chip, what chip, I expected done. from yeah. the game. Yeah. I mean, well, turns are, are fairly simple, which is nice. I mean, you don't have much to think about. I mean, you do, but you don't. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> I mean, on the box, it says, I think it's 60 minutes. And I think we got a, our learning game done in like 40, 45 I mean, it, yeah. something that I could play a few times every night, you know? Now, because this has been available in the European markets for a couple months, let's talk about people here in the States. If they're just thinking, oh, I need to have another Kenitsia title on my game shelf, how are they going to go about mm -hmm. getting it? Uh, it should be a... I, that that's a that's a question that I am not <laughs> I don't have a, a good answer for I'm sorry um, but probably at, at most <laughs> local game stores or online game stores I mean it, it's available now I know that <laughs> I'm I'm sure someone on the chat will actually probably get on the horn and be able to answer that for us in which case I will relay yes. the answer for everyone else watching after the fact <laughs> that would be excellent <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Alex, is there anything else uh, on behalf of if if you happen to know any information from Ludnova, if anything else that they have planned coming out for 2020, or anything else that you wanted to share about Babylonia in specific? Um, I mean, I will say so. I, I I've been talking about playing this with my wife, and she plays not everything that's like super heavy. And, and mm -hmm. this one she got into pretty much no problem, like, and and was looking forward to playing it again. And that's always a good sign for me. Uh, it's something that I can definitely keep on the shelf and and play in the future. So I think that's, if that's not a sign for somebody else, that's at least a sign for me. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, chat. If you guys are interested in buying this, it's available on Amazon for $50. So thank you for whoever just did a quick research Google on that one. Appreciate it. Um, and Alex, I appreciate you giving us some uh, generous time to take us through a couple of turns of what it might feel like to play uh, Babylonia. And thank you again.